Uh, and now it is my huge privilege uh, to introduce Sarah Ashton. Are you here, Sarah? Sarah, would you come forward? And also, Major Ilya Borshko. Would you both come up, please? Sarah has done something that I admire to the outer limits, which is Sarah went to Ukraine as a war correspondent, but she did even more. I'm, forgive me, I've, I've just misgendered you, no, bad okay. Mitzi. <laughs> Sarah did something extraordinary. She joined the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, I figure that in my job, I've metaphorically spilled ink. You're prepared in your work to spill blood. Uh, I invite you to say a few words and then to introduce Ilya. It's great to be here. Uh, my name is Sergeant Sarah Ashton. I'm with the Armed Forces of Ukraine. One year ago, I was in this room with many of you, actually, different rooms, same awards, and I had been sent back over to the United States to discuss some of my service. Here we are a year later, and I have spilled blood, and with Mitzi last week at the Capitol, along with my commander, Major Boschko, we were able to make rounds not asking for the $61 billion, which is very necessary, but something in a lot of ways is more important. We spoke to policymakers about the need to not just win the victory today, but to continue to win in the future. And that meant ensuring free press, free speech, and democracy, even during a time of questions regarding martial law and some very difficult moments at the front lines. And when our commanders allowed us to come over to discuss it, we absolutely understood that it was a mission to come see you here as well. Because ultimately, although we serve at the front, foreign correspondents are every bit the heroes that soldiers are. And we cannot be able to bask in the victory over the Russian invaders or over autocracy if we're unable to guarantee freedom. And freedom begins with the journalists in this room and free speech and free press today and always even during martial law. Major Boschko. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, I spent like half a year before full scale on the front line in the Donetsk region, working with mostly foreign correspondents. Uh, That's how I know what, what you want, what you need, what is more uh, important and vital in this case. And, of course, it was much more easier than partly it can be described as a trench war. And right now it's a completely different story. And we spent together like eight months, eight months in Kharkiv. Kharkiv and Kharkiv region before and after first counteroffensive. And I may say, uh, right now we found out, surprise, surprise, that free press is a necessity. It's not like we try to find a compromise. It's not like we try to understand you or tolerate even you. We found out this is the only way how we will show the truth. Thank you very much. And I apologize to Thanos in advance. He said three minutes. But I will say this, there's one mis... Hey, Thanos, I love you back there, so thank you for the extra 30 seconds. People talk about war fatigue. However, the public gets their information from you. We understand that if the story is there and you have access to the story, there will be no fatigue. You will always be welcome in Ukraine to do your job, and because of that, we know the world will never forget us. Slava Ukraini! <laughs>